All right, guys. Um, so tonight we're getting into cattle, cotton, railroads. So you guys need to take some Cornell notes as we go through this. Um, this is the next phase after Reconstruction. We've talked about Civil War. We've talked about now we're, Reconstruction. Now we're getting into what happens after Reconstruction. And this is how Texas starts to make their money. Um, and we call this era the cattle, cotton, and railroads. All right, it goes from 18, we'll say about 1860 to about 1900. All right. So to start this off, think about some words you think of when you think of the word economy. You know, we've talked about this before, and we know the economy means money, right? So think of stuff that involves money and involves words that help you think of that, all right? That's where we're going with this. Um, economists study it, and they, they talk about demand, and that is the desire for people to want something. Uh, that is what they want. You guys want an iPhone. You guys want uh, AirPods. That's the demand. They know that y'all want them, so they're going to make them. And that's what we call supply. When they provide that to you is the supply. Um, so we got supply and demand. And those are two big words that deal with eco economics. So here's a picture, you know, Apple. People sit out front of Apple. Um, they try to wait for the new product to come out when they've launched the new product. They'll wait all night for it. And that's a demand for the product. So with that being said, after the Civil War, the demand for beef, extremely rises it goes up real fast all right so when the civil war started and when it ended demand went up texans stopped growing cotton and they began to raise more cattle um i've talked about this before there's a lot of ranches and a ranch is a place that raises animals there's a lot of ranches in texas um by the end of the civil war millions of longhorns roamed freely throughout the state of texas guys if y'all didn't know this the longhorn was the longhorn was created was bred in texas it started in texas they're, that's why they're called the Texas Longhorns. The University of Texas is called the Texas Longhorns. And then we had many farmers had to find new ways to make money and feed their families. So they turned their attention to cattle. Their, their cotton farms were failing because they didn't have slaves to help um, pick their cotton and plant their crops. So they start moving towards cattle ranching. Um, and this leads to cattle drives. And I know you guys know what a cattle drive is. People take the horses, they get on their horses, and they drive these horses, these cattle, up to different places to sell the cattle. If you look at this map right here, <clears throat> you'll notice that a lot of it, if you look at the green and brown, that looks like I-35, I like you're going to Dallas or Houston, or not Houston, Austin, right? That's I-35 right there. A lot of these cattle drives have become the main roads that we use our freeways on. So ranchers hired white, Mexican, and black cowboys to chase, rope, and brand this ca these cattle. The demand in Texas was low, but in the rest of the U.S. it was high. So they didn't really need them here. They needed them up in the others in the northern states. Numerous trails were added to support the growing cattle industry, and the only way to move cattle to the north was to railroad centers was in the Midwest was to drive them, was to ride behind them on horseback while cattle walked dusty trails. Numerous trails were added to support the growing cattle industry in Texas. So this really started branching off and creating these safer routes that these cowboys could take with their cattle. <clears throat> Life on the trail wasn't easy. It was not easy at all. It was not all biscuits and gravy that you see in the movies, right? Cattle drives were difficult. You had to meet tie deadlines and some cowboys rode for 24 straight hours on a horse. Imagine me having you do work for 24 straight hours. You would hate it, right? Um, you guys hate it for 10 minutes. Imagine having to do it for 24 straight hours. Uh, sometimes they had to deal with bad weather. They had water shortages. Um, there were prairie fire fires, and then cattle wrestlers. And those are people that steal cattle. They go and they they take these cattle that you're driving in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, and they'll go steal them and claim them as their own. So one of the trails that they had was the Goodnight Loving Trail. This was this was really started by Charles Goodnight and Oliver Lovin, and they drove from San Angelo West up north into Cheyenne, Cheyenne, Wyoming, all right? The good night was responsible for building the first chuck wagon and it carried food and cooking supplies. So on this trail, the first chuck wagon, the cook started coming on the, on the trail. They started bringing their supplies that they could provide for the, for the uh, other cowboys that were driving. Then we have the Chisholm Trail. This is the most popular one that people um, have ever heard of. And this started here in San Antonio, all right? This was a famous route from Texas to Kansas. Started in San Antonio, ran through Austin and Fort Worth before crossing in the Indian Territory, ending in Kansas. Um, it took three months for a trail boss, uh, for a trail boss, ten cowboys, and a cookie or a cook 
and horse wrangler to herd 2,500 cattle on this on this trail. It took three months. They were living off the land for three months. And in 1871, over 600,000 Longhorn cattle had been herded using the Chisholm Trail to Kansas. That's a lot. All right, here's a here's a statuesque picture of what cattle driving would look like. Um, cattle boom and barbed wire fencing. So as the cattle boom started coming, railroads began to be created and heading west because that's all how they really kind of transported a lot of beef. It made it easier and faster to transport cattle to new markets. And they were also be developed refrigerated cars. They were able to get cars that were refrigerated. That way they could chop the meat at the slaughterhouses, put them on the trains, and send them across country. <clears throat> but at the same time, Farmers were getting upset, and people were getting upset because these people were driving on their land. So they created barbed wire. And barbed wire made it possible for farmers and ranchers in the open range to protect their crops and to fence in their cattle. Because a lot of times these people would be driving their cattle and get mixed in with another group of cattle, and then they all became one. Farmers and ranchers were losing their cattle. Right? Many large ranchers fenced off water sources, even though they didn't own the land on where their water was located. That way these cattle would not invade their water source, would not take up their water source. This started to begin limiting the open range. So they came up with fence cutting. In 1883, Texas was hit by a drought. Cattle began to die with no access to water. And as the sun went down, groups of cowboys cut barbed wire fences of large ranches to get the water. Um, wealthy owners were mad and hired guards to protect barbed wire fences. In 1883, more than $20 million in damage was done. Law passed made fence cutting illegal. And so ranchers banned from putting up fences and land they did not own. So not only did it make it illegal for them to cut the fence, but they said, hey, if you don't own that water source, you can't fence it in. Made it illegal for you. So they were unable to guard their water for their, uh, for their crops and for their, their cattle. So there's a picture, a picture of them putting up a barbed wire fence. See, it takes, it's hard work. It's not, you can't do it one, one person at a time. You have to do it to at least two people. So cattle bust. And in 1885, the demand in the eastern part of the United States began to drop. So the cattle production wasn't needed as much in the east. So this began a cattle bust. And everyone in the cattle drive business suffered. Many cattle died and ranchers went out of business. So a lot of this time, this is really started where cattle started to die, fade off. And they were trying to find other ways to make money. So cattle today. So this is as of 2017. So cattle has decreased. Um, the cattle has decreased because of droughts, a high cost, and dropping sales prices. Um, meat is not demanded as much anymore. Um, there are less and less people eating meat, um, so it's not as popular as it used to be. So the cattle prices are raising because the demand is lower. To make up that money, you raise the price. Um, the cotton boom. So these are new ways to make money. Uh, hunting trips, they created hunting trips, uh, bird watching tours. Um, cotton boom. Cotton growing was time consuming. So that's why cotton really kind of started fizzling out because it takes a lot of time to grow cotton. You can't just grow, throw a seed in the ground and have a plant in a day. It took months. It took weeks. So slaves prepared area by fertilizing tilling. Slave labor was used to pick each cotton ball or bowl. Seeds and fibers had to be removed by hand until 1792 when Eli Whitney created the cotton gin. So Texas was booming in cotton business. And then the Civil War came, right? So Confederate troops needed food, not cotton. Farmers stopped planting cotton and put slaves to work growing wheat and corn to feed the soldiers. So factories east demanded cotton for clothes, shoes, and other products. Textile factories, that's a factory that makes cloth. And then Texan farmers began to grow cotton, only cotton. So why do we have railroads? Um, railroads were built to transport products. In the 1880s, thousands of miles of railroad tracks laid in Texas. It was a cheap way to ship cotton all over the United States. They were able to ship cotton and they were able to ship cattle and the beef quicker, faster, more efficiently. So they, they, that's why railroads were created. Um, but then we had a cotton bust. So other states began to grow cotton, not just Texas. So the prices were starting to drop, right? And it was determined by the supply and demand. The cotton boom equal limited supply of money. So cotton meant more money. When there was a cotton bust, there's a lot more cotton, less money to be made. So many other farmers outside Texas grew cotton and lowered the price. No more slaves means they had no had they had to pay their workers. And the bull the bull weevil, which is a beetle that killed cotton, 
um, the bull weevil would come and kill the cotton and eat all the cotton that was in the fields. The transcontinental railroad. And so in 1861, only 500 miles of rail lines were in Texas. The transcontinental railroad stretched across the entire continent, connecting east and west by rail. And this trip from California to Iowa once took six months by wagon, now only took 15 days by train. So they were able to travel from Iowa, which is the Midwest, which is south of Missouri, which is you know, just a little west of Illinois, Chicago area, took five, six months to go to California by horse. But now it's only taken 15 days. So the railroad boom. And in 1883, Northern Pacific Railway connected northern section of the U.S. from Minnesota to Washington. If you look up there, you see it's right here, the Northern Pacific Railroad. We have a Southern Pacific Railroad, which cut through Texas from New Orleans um, all the way into California. And that, that was completed in a 20-year project. And then by 1893, the Great Northern Railroad was completed. And that's this one way at the top up here. So the rail, railroads in Texas, we had the TNO, the INGN, and the FW and DC. FW and DC, Fort Worth, Amarillo. The TNP was from the Sierra Blanca, which is like El Paso area, all the way to Marshall, Texas. And then we had the uh, INGN, which ran from Longview, which is in e Northeast Texas, all the way down to Laredo. So the positives of the railroad boom was it connected Texas to the rest of the US, it made it easier to travel, transport people. And every stop made a birth of a new town of growth. So when they made a, st uh, they made a, a train st a station, the towns began to grow. So cities began popping up. Negative effects. Chinese men helped build the Southern Pacific Line from El Paso to San Antonio. They opened restaurants and laundry services. Texans wanted them to go home. They were attacked, beaten, and business burned to the ground. The Americans banned Chinese immigrants from entering the country. And there were 10,000 filed lawsuits over 50, 50 years later to win, uh, to, later to win. All right, so guys, again, if you have any questions, um, my class, I know that I'll be on tomorrow, on Tuesday, uh, about 11 o'clock for a little while. You guys can ask any questions. Um, we will be doing a worksheet later on uh, involving this to move on, go into further with uh, cotton cattle railroads. You guys have a great evening. Thank you so much.